Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video I'm going to introduce you to a very nice .NET feature which makes seemingly untestable code testable. Now, we're not going to hack anything around, this is a very valid use case, I just see many people not be aware of this feature and all its variations, so in this video we're going to see all the ways we're going to use it in our project. If you like the content and you want to see more, make sure you subscribe, ring the notification bell, and for more training, check out nickchapsas.com. Now, just a quick reminder that I will be running my two-day in-person workshop called Introduction to Effective Testing in C-Sharp and .NET in the following dates in NDC Oslo, NDC Sydney, .NET Days in Romania, NDC Minnesota, and NDC London. So if you want to come sit down with me and learn some cool stuff, check the link in the description to all of those conferences. And if you're watching this in the future, I will have updated the links down below to new conferences that I will be attending and running this. So let's take a look at what I have here. I have this solution here called Octokit. Now, for those of you who don't know, Octokit is effectively the client SDK for the GitHub API. So it allows you to do all the stuff you'd ever want against GitHub with pull requests, repository actions, when you want to write code that deals with GitHub in a programmatic way, this is the library you'd be using. Now, if I go to the tests, as you can see, the tests have red squiggly lines. They won't run. And if I open any of these, let's see why this is happening. And the error is the same for all of them, by the way. So if I hover over this basic authenticator, you will see that the error I'm getting is cannot access internal basic authenticator here. Now, Octokit is a library, and when you're serving a library to someone, whether that's internally or externally to the public like this one, then the internal access modifier, that keyword, is the strongest thing you have to prevent people from doing things they shouldn't do with your library. And it should be used a lot. When I was writing library code, I was using it to everything that wasn't supposed to be completely public to the consumer, because when you mark something as public in library, then if you make a change to that, you're going to break your consumer. By having it internal, you say, hey, you cannot use this, this is mine, I can break it the way I want, and you will never know because you never had access to that. And it's different than protected in private, internal means that something is only accessible by everything within that assembly, which is effectively that project. So basic authenticator can be used everywhere within the Octokit library over here, but nothing externally can call it. Now here's where the problem lies. Internal effectively has the properties of public, but for a single assembly. But when you're trying to write tests, your tests obviously live in a separate assembly. So you somehow need to be able to import it, even though it's internal. Well, this is where the basic functionality of our solution comes into picture. And we're going to see the raw version first. So if I go here in this Octogate project, you're going to see this properties folder. Now, by default, this properties folder might exist or might not exist in your project. In this case, it existed because this project is actually using the solution I'm going to show you. But you don't have to put the thing I'm going to show you in that folder. It can be anywhere on the assembly. So I can go in the properties folder and create a new class called assembly info. Now this name isn't important. It used to be something that used to come with projects back in the day, I think in the .NET framework world, but ever since .NET Core, it isn't really there anymore. But anyway, what this allows you to do now is it doesn't need to be a class, it doesn't have to have namespaces, it doesn't need to have anything. All it needs to have is, say, assembly in a standalone attribute and then, say, internals visible to octokit.tests. And now if I save, the moment I save, you will see that my error went away and all the other errors have gone away as well. Because now what I said is that, hey, on this assembly, the internals of this assembly, and by internals it means all the things marked as internal, are visible to a project with the following name, or the assembly with the following name. And if you want to have a public uh, key as well on that assembly, you can have it here and this would work. So that way you can allow that project to access things that are internal, but only that project, everything else, can't really do that. And this is perfect for unit tests. This is exactly how you should be doing this. In fact, we can use the new GitHub search and find the .NET org and language uh, C sharp. There we go. And if I say internals visible to, then as you can see, there's tons of things in .NET itself that use it to test their internal code. As you can see, and the framework, MS build, uh, other stuff, the task stuff. 
tons of other stuff it's all over the place it's all over the place because you should be using it it is how it solves that problem internal code isn't like private where you need to go around loops to go through the public interface and unit test the method internal is effectively public but for your project not for any other project now let's take this a step further because even though this is fine and cool if you also want to have the same thing for the integration for example i would have to say tests dot integration and then i would also have to do the same for conventions and, and all that and if you're following a very consistent naming pattern for your tests in your project like i do and like i show you in my testing courses that i have at nickshops.com where i actually talk about all that in more detail then there's ways to deal with this in a more elegant way so what i'm going to do is i'm going to comment this out we don't want it and i'm going to go to the cs proj over here and what I'm going to start this with is a new item group. And I'm effectively going to drop an assembly attribute in this assembly through the CS proj. And I won't type this full thing. I'll show you how you can do this. This is how you can do this. Basically, we're using the assembly attribute property here to say add an assembly of this type. And this is the full type name the internals visible to attribute that we just added in the assembly info and say the first parameter of that should be this which is the string the octokit tests and if i save and i do that then as you can see all the tests still work however there is nothing in my assembly info how does this work well it works because ms build will actually look at this and say oh i know what to do with this i'm going to drop an assembly attribute in your code and the way this works is on the obj folder over here we're gonna see the debug or the release folder and if i go in you're gonna see this octokit.assemblyinfo.cs which if i drop in here you're gonna see has the internals visible to attribute with the name and it's doing that because we specified that here. Now, this isn't necessarily a better solution at this point. However, this allows us to be more flexible now with whatever we put in here. And since we're following a very consistent naming pattern for our tests, for example, Octokit, which is a project name or the assembly name, and then dot tests, what we can do now is delete Octokit and say assembly name dot tests as a parameter. And this will still generate it. This will still work. And just to prove that, yes, this is doing it. When I updated that, it updated that as well. So it is now getting the assembly name of our assembly, our project, and it's using that to automatically generate this. Now, if we go back to the Octokit folder structure over here, if I scroll down, you will see this file over here, directory.build.targets. Let's go ahead and drop that in here. Now, this is a special file that MS Build will actually take a look at, and anything that is in here will be applied to every single project in the cascading directories meaning that i can actually take that from that specific project now and i can put it here and as you can see this still exists it didn't live it is still here but the idea is that if you have a multi-project solution with multiple test projects as well named after those projects then you can drop it in a single place over here with this generic parameter and as long as you follow the same generic naming structure it will be applied to every single project no matter how many you have in your solution which makes it awesome however because of how popular this approach used to be from dotnet 5 i think and forward you don't have to use this full thing what you can do instead is simply say internals visible to and then say include and you can have in this case octokit.test and that's it and now this is all you need to achieve the exact same thing now it goes to the bottom over here but it still absolutely works and yes if you're using a public key then it will also work with a public key like that however we don't want to lose the parameterization and we don't i can still use the assembly name parameter here and this will all work still just fine so if i was to use this the way i'm naming my projects then i would have assembly name dot tests dot unit because that's where i'm putting my unit tests then integration and then if i have some system tests that for some reason need to access internal things then i can do it like this and then have that for any of my projects and that's the last place it needs to be and now everything has the internal keyword applied to it you can take this and change it any way you want but i really like how this takes the original concept that used to be in that assembly info that you no longer need to have now because it will be generated with this very nice and elegant approach that is also fairly 
flexible. But what do you think? Did you know about this? Are you unit testing your internals? Leave a comment down below. Well, that's all I had for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Special thanks to my Patreons for making this video possible. If you want to support me as well, you're going to find the link in the description down below. Leave a like if you like this video. Subscribe for more content like this and ring the bell as well. And I'll see you in the next video. Keep coding.